Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session of uh, uh, the course. So, in this class, what we will be looking into we will be categorizing the various. So, in the last class, we have seen how a membrane is cast and what are the various controlling factors of uh, uh, to control the pore size distribution of the membrane. Now, in this class, we will be basically broadly doing the categorization of the membrane based processes. First, we will divide the membrane based process into two broad categories one is the symmetric or homogeneous membranes and another is the asymmetric membranes. In symmetric membranes, the throughout the whole cross section of the membrane, the pore size distribution is more or less uniform. So, it is more or less uniform pore size distribution across the cross section. But in case of asymmetric membranes, there will be a distribution of pore size, pore size distribution is not uniform. is not uniform across the cross section. So, in, in case of asymmetric membrane, there is a thin skin followed by a porous substructure and typically this is a dense thin skin and there is a porous substructure which will be following the thin skin and the uh, the controlling the selectivity of the membrane will be coming from this this thin skin and what is the objective of this porous support the porous support will be giving a kind of uh, porous substructure will be giving a kind of mechanical support to the thin skin and typically this skin will be having um, a thickness between let us say 10 to uh, 50 micron and the uh, porous substructure will be rest among the total thickness of let us say 150 or 200 micron. So, because the actual membrane is, th is this thin skin, the throughput of the process will be really very, very high compared to a homogeneous or symmetric membrane. In case of symmetric membrane, the pore size distribution is more or less uniform throughout the membrane. So, therefore, the there are two disadvantages of this. One is uh, the thickness of the membrane is really very high that will be decreasing the throughput of the process, but if you if you have a dense you know porous structure the throughput will be always less. So, for example, a symmetric or homogeneous membrane is a kind of reverse osmosis membrane. On the other hand the typical other membranes like ultrafilter all grades of ultrafiltration microfiltration they are typically asymmetric membranes and because of the smaller thickness of the skin the throughput of the process is more. So, let us look into the various types of motions those will be occurring in, 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 in the membranes. The first you know type of motion or transport mechanism is permeation. Permeation is a process involving three steps dissolution diffusion and desorption so first the solute will be dissolved into the polymer matrix then because of the concentration gradient it will diffuse from the retentate stream or the feed stream to the permeate stream 
and then it will be dissolved in the permeate stream. So, these three mechanisms in one is called permeation. Then comes uh, nuts and diffusion. If d by lambda, d is the pore diameter and lambda is the mean free path is less than 0.2, then the diffusion is called the Nutsen diffusion. Typically, for the diffusion of gaseous streams, Nutsen diffusion becomes very important. In case of reverse osmosis, the permeation is very, very important and then the third transport mechanism is convection. So, convection is basically occurred due to the pressure drop, pressure gradient. There can be a mixture of convection and diffusion as well and this, this type of transport mechanism is observed in ultrafiltration, microfiltration and higher cutoff membranes and more porous membrane. Once we understand the different transport mechanisms, those are involved in the membrane based processes. Now, let us categorize these processes broadly. So, and in detail, detailed. So, detailed categorization we do. There are mainly four processes we will be dealing with. One is reverse osmosis, and there is ultrafiltration. Non, uh, uh, reverse osmosis, then in between reverse osmosis and ultrafiltration, there is nano filtration. So, reverse osmosis, nano filtration, ultrafiltration, and micro filtration. So, let us go and see the characteristic of each of these processes in detail. In case of reverse osmosis, typically we are talking about separation of monovalent salt. salt like NaCl. So, this, uh, this is widely used for the desalination to produce the potable water from dis, uh, you know saline water, so sea water. So, a good reverse osmosis membrane means we are definitely talking about 95 percent, more than 95 percent separation or rejection of sodium chloride. Okay. And typically, the pore size is varying from 2 to 10 angstrom, that is a typical range of pore size in a reverse osmosis membrane. Osmotic pressure plays a very, very important role. In case of reverse osmosis, we will be coming to the, the concept of osmotic pressure definition and other quantifications probably later on in this class itself. And then we will be seeing very, uh, we will be seeing why this osmotic pressure is important in case of reverse osmosis. So, osmotic pressure plays a very important role and the transport mechanism is permeation. Because we are talking of a very small pore sized membrane, it is a dense membrane, something it is the reverse osmosis membrane is also called almost a non porous membrane. So, uh, 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 so therefore, the transport mechanism is uh, dissolution, diffusion and desorption and uh, it is basically depending on the uh, operating pressure range, what is the, the, uh, the throughput of the process will be depending on the operating pressure range. Typical operating pressure range will be will be will be above 25 atmosphere. So, in most of the plants, desalination plants, they operate around around 50 atmosphere, 60 atmosphere, because one has to overcome the osmotic pressure of the solution in order to get the first drop of water out of the reverse osmosis membrane. More be the operating pressure, more gradient will be created and one will be maintaining an effective driving force, uh, effective driving force that is the operating pressure minus the osmotic pressure. So, that will be more, if that will be more the throughput of, of this process will be more and it will be commercially viable, it will be more viable commercially. So, what are the various applications of reverse osmosis? First application as I told for the desalination purpose and it has been, it has been used quite uh, widely in middle east 
in, in other countries as well to, to produce the potable water from saline water. Um, then uh, other purposes for example, separation of smaller sized solutes solutes and salts from any process streams. What is nano filtration? Nano filtration is basically a process in between reverse osmosis and ultra filtration. Typical pore size of the nano filtration membrane lying in between 10 angstrom to 20 angstrom. And we are talking of a very good nano filtration membrane re, you know leads to separation of monovalent salt between you know 40 to 80 percent ok and divalent salts quite high Sixty to ninety percent, or even higher. Then all the molecular weights uh, that will be uh, all the solutes having the molecular weights in the range of one hundred fifty to one thousand Dalton, they can be separated by the nanofiltration membrane. In fact, there will be grades of nano filtration, there are various cutoffs of nano filtration membranes are available can be fabricated which will be separating various solutes which will be having the different molecular weights. Now, all the dyes they, they have the they, they are, we, are, we are encountering for textile industry and other purposes industrial purposes they have the molecular weight in the range of 150 to 950 Dalton. All the polyphenols from plant extract, they will be having a, uh, you know, constant, a molecular weight between uh, between between 300 to 800 Dalton. Steviocytes like there are various specialty uh, phytochemicals obtained from the plant. For example, steviocyte, rubidocyte, they will be having a molecular weight in the range of 700 to 900 Dalton. So, all these solutes can be separated or can be concentrated for the nano filtration. In fact, if you remember that membrane based processes can be used either for purification, concentration, separation and even fractionation. If you select a proper membrane and the and fix your objective, what type of you know um, operation you would like to carry out. So, therefore, uh, the in case of nano filtration, the operating pressure drop uh, uh, will be less and the transport mechanism is same as permeation like reverse osmosis, because its pore size is slightly larger than the reverse osmosis. The transport mechanism is permeation and operating pressure drop will be slightly less than reverse osmosis and typically it will be in the range of uh, 10 to 20, 25 atmosphere. And what are the applications? As has been discussed, the applications will be separation of dyes, polyphenols, lower molecular weight, protein, polymer, it has a wide application in the pharmaceutical industries. So, nano filtration can be used for the fractionation even for the con for, for the concentration and even for the fractionation. So, uh, that goes for the nano filtration then the um, uh, uh, it can be used for the uh, water softening because the divalent salts calcium, magnesium, iron can be removed by the nano filtration operation. And nano filtration is also used as a pretreatment sometimes to pretreatment as a uh, uh, pretreatment of reverse osmosis 
system so that some amount of salt is removed by the nano filtration and load on reverse osmosis is reduced. It is also used to produce uh, the process water for an industrial plant. Because in any plant, if you use saline water for the um, uh, as, as an utility stream, then uh, there that will cause the um, uh, corrosion of the pipelines. So one can use uh, nano filtration for softening to to remove the salts and, and uh, calcium, magnesium, so that the deposition and scaling of the pipelines can be reduced. So nano filtration has quite you know different applications. Then we'll come to the categorization of ultra filtration. The ultra filtration has the versatile capacity membrane. So, it has a pore size distribution, pore size range uh, in the range of let us say 20 angstrom to 1000 angstrom and it has the solutes that can be separated as a molecular weight in the range of 1000 to even several lakhs, maybe maybe 5 lakhs, 1000 Dalton to 5 lakhs Dalton. Okay. So, bigger size particles can be separated by the ultrafiltration membrane and the operating pressure requirement is less and it will be in the range of uh, 3 to 8 atmosphere and typical applications and it is a huge applications because this takes care of solutes separation of solutes of a wide range of applications. So, separation of proteins separation of polymers, polysaccharides, like pectins in clarification of fruit juice. Uh, there, there are various applications of ultrafiltration and the, um, the mechanism of transport It is a mixture of diffusion and convection for lower cutoff membranes, where we will be separating the solutes which will be having low molecular weight. For open membrane, open ultrafiltration membranes, mainly the convection is the governing mechanism. Okay. So, that goes for the ultrafiltration, the final membrane based process is microfiltration that we will be talking about. In case of microfiltration, we are really talking about a porous membrane, which will be having a size more than uh, pore size in the range of microns 0.1 micron to uh, and higher. And molecular weight of solutes that needs to be separated uh, will be high, maybe more, more uh, you know la larger size molecules, micron sized solutes are separated by microfiltration and the pressure requirement will be less. 1 to 4 atmosphere and what are the various applications? Applications are separation of uh, clay, paint, very high molecular weight solutes. And then 
uh, microorganisms they they fall in under category microorganisms like bacteria typically all the water borne bacteria can be separated by the microfiltration processes but the virus they will be having a lower size one has to go for a for an ultra filtration membrane to remove the virus from the aqueous solution so what is the uh, uh, transport mechanism transport mechanism is mainly convection okay so these are the uh, you know um, uh, uh, four major categories of membrane based separation process now we will be looking into the various properties and definitions definitions which will be what will be coming across quite often in this course in order to model the and modeling and simulation of the process. So, will be the first property that will be looking into the osmotic pressure of a solution. What is the osmotic pressure of a solution? Uh, every osmotic pressure of a solution indicates the thirst of water. So, a solution more osmotic pressure means the solution is more thirsty for water. So, let us conduct an experiment. Suppose, we will be having a two chamber system separated by a semi permeable barrier, semi permeable membrane. Semi permeable membrane means it will be it will be open to a particular species and it does not allow to transport any other species. For example, if you have a salt and aqueous solution of salt, that means there are two species in this system, one is the salt and other is the water. So, water being smaller in size, this perfectly semi permeable membrane will allow water to permeate through it and does not allow salt to permeate through it. For so, therefore, let us keep one chamber to be filled up by water there is a solvent and we fill the other chamber by let us say NaCl solution. So, NaCl is a solute. Now, this membrane allows water to permeate through from the, the solvent side to the solution side. So, it is basically the solution side and this is the solvent size. So, as time progresses the water concentration or activity of water is less in the solution side. So, since this membrane is a perfectly semi permeable membrane, it allows only water to permeate through it from the solvent to the solution side. So, therefore, the water being transported from this side to this side and this will be kept on going unless an, an equilibrium will be reached and that typically that equilibrium will be reached um, around uh, it will take around 24 to 36 hours. So, at the equilibrium what happens the uh, the level of water comes down in the solvent side and in the same time the level of water in the solution side goes up. So, therefore, it will be creating a hydrostatic pressure of rho g h where h is the final height difference of the level of uh, so solution in both the both the chambers. So, this rho g h or the static pressure that will be created by this system is known as the osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure of solution. Now, this osmotic pressure will be very, very important. So, if we let now let us look into the uh, another system where we have a higher concentration of salt in the solution side. If we have a higher concentration of salt in the solution side, the water water activity will be uh, will be very very less in the solution side, and therefore more water will be coming from the solvent side to the solution side in order to attain the equilibrium. So therefore, the after after equilibrium, the height of the uh, of the solution side will be more compared to the 
height of the water solvents uh, of the uh, of water in the solvent side. So, the height difference will be more in this case and the osmotic pressure will be more. So, if we so the conclusion is if NaCl concentration goes up the osmotic pressure development will be more. Therefore, osmotic pressure is known as a colligative property. Property and it is directly proportional to concentration of solute. So, osmotic pressure is typically denoted by a symbol pi and pi is proportional to C. Another property of osmotic pressure is that osmotic pressure is inversely proportional to the molecular weight. Okay. So, if we are talking about the molecular uh, small, uh, of, a, of a smaller solute, which will be having a molecular, in fact size of the solute is directly proportional to the molecular weight. So, if we have a smaller solute that uh, which will be having a smaller molecular weight, its osmotic pressure is high. So, therefore, one can have high osmotic pressure under which situation, if we have a smaller molecular weight solute and larger concentration of the solute. Typically, in a sea water, the, the concentration of, of salt is around 20,000 to 30,000 ppm, that is 20 to 30 grams per liter or kg per meter cube. And what is the molecular weight of salt? It will be having very less, it molecular weight is, uh, is around 59 Dalton, 58.5 to be precise. So, it will be having the salt. So, therefore, at this concentration of salt sodium chloride at a uh, with, with a molecular weight around 58.5 Dalton, its osmotic pressure will be very, very high. If you really calculate, the osmotic pressure turns out to be around 20 to 22 atmosphere. So, therefore, in order to get uh, in order to get the uh, uh, reasonable throughput through the uh, process or system, one has to have an operating pressure which will be higher than the osmotic pressure which will overcome this osmotic pressure. So, therefore, 25 atmosphere and more is prescribed as the operating pressure of the reverse osmosis system. Now, now you must have understood that osmotic pressure uh, if you if you go for higher molecular solutes the osmotic pressure will be less, because it is inversely proportional to the molecular weight of the solutes. Therefore, the for higher molecular solutes the osmotic pressure is less. So, therefore, the operating pressure requirement will be less. So, that is why if you have observed when you have defined the various categories of membrane based processes uh, as, as the pore size of the membrane increases the pressure requirement de decreases. So, this is the reason as the pressure requirement is decrease uh, as the pore size of the membrane is increasing, we are really talking about separation of solutes which will be having the higher sized or, or which will be having the higher molecular weights. So, their osmotic pressure is less. So, the operating pressure requirement for having a realizable throughput or which will be, uh, which will be, uh, which will be of significance that will be the requirement of the pressure is less. So, the my for the microfiltration membrane where we are talking about separation of very large particle, the osmotic pressure is negligible and one can have very low pressure in the range of 1 to 2 atmosphere in order to get a realizable flux which will be commercially viable. So, the Vantoff relation is generally used to quantify the osmotic pressure of a solution R T C by M. Okay. R is the absolute, uh, R is the universal gas constant, T is the temperature um, in absolute scale, C is the solute concentration, M w is the molecular weight. C is the solute concentration, T is the temperature of solution, R is the universal gas constant. Now, this is generally used for salts for salts this is slightly modified this there will be a factor that will be multiplied in front of this expression. This will be the valency of 
the strong electrolytes. If, we, if you are talking about sodium chloride, this will be Na plus and C L minus. So, this factor will be 1 plus absolute of minus 1. So, it will be 2 R T C by M W. So, therefore, uh, if you if you are talking about uh, salts, this relationship the linear relationship holds. And for concentrated for, for dilute solution of any macromolecules, which is not salt, one can typically use the Van Toff relation, which will be linear in nature. For example, dye and other material, but if it is you are talking about a concentrated solution of macromolecule, one will be using a polynomial of uh, uh, polynomial of concentration how this relationship is generated this relationship is generated by conducting exp, you know uh, uh, by measuring the osmotic pressure of different concentration of solutes in an instrument called osmometer. If you use an osmometer and prepare different concentration of the solutes, one can measure the osmotic pressure and then one has to plot pi by c versus concentration. In fact, this is very important how this relation or, or, the, or this correlation of osmotic pressure is generated, because we have to assume that the concentration the, uh, for, for a pure solvent the osmotic pressure is less or osmotic pressure is 0. So, if you talk about a concentration if you talk about a pure solvent C is 0 and osmotic pressure is 0. Therefore, whenever you are talking about the measurement of concentration uh, measurement of, of uh, osmotic pressure of any solution, we measure pi as a function of C in an osmotic pressure, then, then prepare a table pi by C versus C and typically this curve will be a polynomial through origin and then, a, a, and then this correlation will be fitted. And therefore, since there will be an intercept here, so therefore, uh, there will be an intercept in this case. So therefore, when we express pi as a function of concentration, it will be it will be going through the origin. So therefore, one will be getting a relation uh, confirming the relationship that for pure solvent, when the concentration is zero, solute concentration is zero, pi will be equal to zero. Okay. We stop here in this class. In the next class, we will be looking to the other properties and definitions, which will be very very important throughout our course. Thank you very much.